In this extremely competitive market of 2024, you cannot simply expect to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript and land a six-figure job at Google. These times are gone. Nowadays, you need to have more than one programming language under your belt. I've done my research by looking at US job openings on Indeed and by looking at the average salary data for each language coming from the Stack Overflow Developer Survey, which surveyed over 50,000 engineers. So without further ado, here are the five best programming languages that you should learn in 2024. Before getting into the five main ones, let's give out some honorable mentions. Ruby. Ruby is a dynamically typed programming language that is known for maximizing developer happiness because its syntax is very simple and very elegant. It's also a productive language with its highly popular framework called Ruby on Rails. Absolutely massive companies have been built using it, including Airbnb, GitHub, and Shopify. There are also countless startups that have been built using it because Rails is what we call a battery included framework. It has pretty much everything you need straight out of the box. So you don't need to spend time configuring or coding stuff from scratch. Ruby developers are amongst the highest paid in the industry with an average salary of $98,000. But there are only 2000 job openings in the United States. And most of these jobs are looking for senior engineers. So it's harder at the entry level, which is why Ruby didn't make it on the main list. But it's a really cool language and it has a great community of freelancers and solo developers using it. The next honorable mention goes to C++, which is a statically typed systems language that is known for its very high learning curve because you basically have to manage memory manually. There is a lot of demand for C++ developers and they're paid an average of $75,000 a year, which is pretty good. But there is one language that has a brighter future and that even has the potential of replacing C++. As you can probably guess, that language is Rust. Rust is another low-level language that has a high learning curve. It's very new. It was only released in 2015, but it's been the most loved programming language for many years in a row. At the moment, it has pretty low demand, with only 1,100 job openings in the United States. But that number is expected to grow very fast because many companies and even government agencies are trying to change their C++ and C code to Rust. And it's not only random government agencies, but the White House wants to make that transition because Rust is safer and poses less of a security risk. Rust developers are also extremely high paid with an average of $87,000 a year. It's a very hard language to learn, but if you want to get into low level systems and embedded programming, Rust is going to be your best friend. If you're a complete beginner, please don't start with Rust because learning it can be very discouraging. You should start with one of the next programming languages on the list and then go back to Rust if you're feeling up for a challenge. You you know what language you should probably start with? Python. It's the programming language that can do absolutely everything. Web development, AI, machine learning, robotics, you name it, Python can do it. It's probably why it's the most in-demand language in the world with over 22,000 job openings in the United States alone. Python devs are also pretty well paid, with an average salary of $78,000. So why is Python not higher up on the list? Well, even though it has huge demand, landing Python-specific jobs is very hard, because these positions are most often AI and machine learning positions, which are extremely hard to get into as a self-taught programmer. In fact, most of these positions do not only require a bachelor's degree, but most often a master's or even a PhD. Nonetheless, I think it's the first programming language that you should learn as a beginner. You know, Python was my first language and I still use it very often, be it at work, for writing quick scripts or in smaller personal projects. In addition, it's also a great language to use for programming interviews because its syntax is so simple and so close to English that you can spend more time thinking about a solution to the problem instead of thinking about how to write that solution. Now for programming language with not so simple of a syntax, we've got Java and C Sharp. So why did I put them together? Well, both are statically typed programming languages that are verbose and their syntax is also very similar because C Sharp was inspired by Java. There is huge demand for these languages, especially in enterprise software with over 21,000 job openings for Java and 17,000 for C Sharp in the United States. So the demand is clearly here and these languages are here to stay. They are performant, they have a great ecosystems and many, many companies all over the world are using it, especially finance companies. They do love their Java. Looking at the salaries, they're a bit lower than the other programming languages on the list. Java has an average salary of $73,000 a year, 
well, C Sharp is at 75,000. An important thing to note is that Java and even C Sharp are widely taught in college campuses all over the world. So if you're a self-taught developer and you want to learn those languages, keep in mind that you'll probably be competing with college graduates, which can be both an advantage and a disadvantage. The disadvantage is that obviously you'll be competing with people that have degrees. But the advantage is that there are a lot of jobs available and generally less self-taught developers choose to learn Java or C Sharp. In fact, the next language on the list is the de facto bootcamper and self-taught developer programming language. As you can probably guess, it's JavaScript. It's the dynamically typed programming language that rules the web. It's the third most in demand, just behind Python and Java with over 20,000 job openings in the United States. JavaScript developers are paid $74,000 a year, which is around the Java and C Sharp area. JavaScript is the language of the front end, and it has an absolutely crazy ecosystem. I mean, we have the three major front end frameworks, React, Angular, Vue, there is Node and Bun for the server, and then you've got the newest kids on the block. Next.js, Remix, and SvelteKit. It's a bit insane, honestly. It seems like there's a new JavaScript framework coming out every single day. But it's also why working on the front end can be so fun and challenging, because innovation happens constantly. JavaScript is the language most often taught in boot camps because you can do a lot with it. It can be used both on the front end and on the back end. This means that there's a lot of competition. So if you want to get into web development or front end in particular, you should learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But the basics won't cut it anymore. Go learn TypeScript, because once you go TypeScript, you never go back. Go learn React, go learn Next.js. If you want to land a job in the front-end world, you'll have to become really, really good, and even specialize in a certain tech stack. Finally, last but not least, we've got a programming language that's been on my radar for a while, and it's called Go or Golang. Originally created by Google and first released in 2012, Golang is a statically typed language that is known for its simplicity and its performance. It's used on the backend, and it's almost as performant as Rust while being extremely simple to write. In the US, there are 5,000 job openings for Go developers, which are the highest paid on the list, with an average salary of $93,000. Developers seem to love Go, and it has a great future, which is why it's the next programming language that I'll be learning. Because right now, if you want to develop a web application, let's say, you can go with JavaScript or TypeScript, for the full stack if you don't care about performance. But if performance is of any concern, you need to go with a statically typed programming language on the backend. Of course, if you need maximum performance, you should go lower level, like with Rust or C++. But that's not needed for most applications. So what are the remaining options? You could certainly go with Java or C Sharp, but why would you go with them when you have Golang, which is simpler to write and more performant? Plus. It has a cute mascot. At the end of the day, the language that you use doesn't matter. But if I can summarize it quickly, if it's your first programming language or you want to get into AI, learn Python. If you want to get into front-end or full-stack web development, learn JavaScript. If you want to build highly performant embedded systems, go with Rust. If you want to get into back-end development, learn Java or c -sharp for enterprise software, or learn Golang for more tech-focused companies. Personally, Golang is going to be my choice, but please note that I already have experience with Python, Java, and JavaScript, so Go is not going to be my first programming language. So now that I've told you my opinion, I want to hear yours in the comments below. What programming language are you going to learn and why? Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.